Good morning, Year 10. Could you pause the video and complete your do now for today, please? Okay, so the first question, what is the difference between atoms and ions? Atoms have a neutral charge, whilst ions can either have a positive or a negative charge. Question two. Draw an electron shell diagram for the following ions. So we have sodium, chlorine with a negative charge, that will become a chloride ion. We have O2 minus and we have Al, which is aluminium, 3 plus. So I'm just going to switch to my camera so that you can see this. So, if we look on the periodic table, sodium is in group 1. So it's going to have beta 1 plus iron as shown here. We can also see, if I move this up slightly, that the atomic number is 11. So in the atom, there are 11 electrons. But we know to get a plus charge, it must have lost one. So the iron has 10 electrons. So... It will look something like this. So there's two electrons in the inner shell, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We now have a total of ten electrons, and then we just have to indicate it has a positive charge. Okay, again for the next one. We look at chlorine, the atom has 17 electrons, we have a negative charge, so 17 plus 1 equals 18 electrons. So, your answer will look something like this. to you whether you pair your electrons up or whether you try and spread them out around the circle. I personally like to pair them up just because it makes it easier when I'm checking my counting. So we now have 18 electrons, the outer shell is full, so let me get rid of that so you can see better. And we have a negative charge. I'm going to quickly do the last two just so you can check your answers. So we have oxygen with an extra two electrons oxygen started with eight so eight plus two is ten You can see the sodium plus iron on the oxygen 2 minus iron have the same number of electrons. Aluminium started with 13. Because it's a plus charge, we lose 3 electrons. So this also has 10 electrons. Okay, so that is the answer to that part of our do now. The next bit was to describe how an element's position in the periodic table is linked to the structure of an atom of the element. We know that if the group number is three, the atom of that element will have three electrons in its outer shell. So we can say that the group number tells us how many electrons are in that atom's outer shell for part three. Okay, for today's work, you will need your handbooks to look at the periodic table and you will also need your calculator. So if you would like to pause the video and go and get those. Because in today's lesson, we will be looking at ionic compounds. That is your title for today. If you could write that at the top of your page. And today's lesson objectives are that we can write the formula of ionic compounds, we can describe 
how the law of conservation of mass links to the relative formula mass using balanced equations and we can calculate the percentage by mass of an element in a compound. So a quick quiz, this should only take you 30 seconds. In your books, positive ions are formed when dot dot dot. Negative ions are formed when dot dot dot. Complete those two sentences for me. Hopefully you've paused the video and completed that quick quiz task. So positive ions are formed when an atom loses electrons. Negative ions are formed when an atom gains electrons. Okay, so we're going to be looking at ionic bonding. Ionic bonding occurs between metals and non-metals. Wherever you see this little pad and pencil logo in this video please pause the video and write down the sentence that is next to it it's really useful for you to have this information electrons are lost from the metal to form a positive ion whilst electrons can be gained from the non-metal to form a negative ion and there is a strong electrostatic attraction between the positive and negative ion and that is what we call the ionic bond Okay, so here is a periodic table. Can you remember where the metals are and where the non-metals are? If we draw this line on the periodic table in your handbook in a different colour, all of the things to the left of that zigzag stairs are a metal and all of the things to the right, including hydrogen that floats around at the top, are non-metals. So go ahead and draw that line into your handbook. It's really useful to have. Some examples of ionic compounds. Salt. Salt is our most common ionic compound that we use in our everyday lives. Because table salt that we put on our chips and have in our crisps is actually sodium chloride. So it's an ion of sodium that has an electrostatic attraction to an ion of chloride or a chloride ion, which is Cl-. minus. There are other ionic compounds that are also salts, because a salt is just a metal and non-metal bonded together. So we also have potassium iodide, which you may have seen in the lab. We also have polyatomic ions, and these are ions made up of multiple atoms bonded together. Here are some examples. The one on the left, are the ones that you might want to write down in your books. They are the ones we come across most often and it's sometimes just really useful to know the charges of these ions. So the sulfate ion has been fully drawn out for you as has the hydroxide ion. The dots just represent electrons that haven't been paired up to form a bond yet. So don't worry about those. Okay, so ionic formula. When you have a formula for a compound, it is has a neutral charge. So the total positive charge is equal to the total negative charge. So if we were looking at sodium carbonate, we could work out what numbers we would need to write in that ionic formula to make it neutral. So... If I switch back to the visualiser, we need to look at what the charge is on the non-metal ion. So the non-metal in sodium carbonate is going to be the carbonate. And as we saw on the slide before, carbonate, CO3, has a 2 minus charge. So if we're looking at sodium carbonate, Our carbonate is CO3 2 minus. We now need to work out what charge our sodium ion is going to have. So if we look at our periodic table, the easiest thing to do is to look which group it's in. Sodium is in group 1, so it's going to lose one electron, therefore it will become a positive ion. So we're going to have sodium plus. Now, we can't just pop 
these two together and write this because then we have a two minus charge and a positive charge so this overall has a minus one charge so to balance this and make it neutral we need two sodium so we write it like this because we have two lots of sodium will cancel out the charge of the carbonate see if you can have a go at working out these ionic formula I will pop the answers up on go for schools or send you an email out later today so that you can check your answers so pause the video have a go remember to follow the instructions on the left or go back and look at the worked example if you get stuck Okay, so for the next bit, we'll be looking at the relative formula mass. We have the definition for the relative formula mass on the slide. If you could write that down in your books. Okay, so if we take sodium carbonate, we can work out the relative formula mass of that compound. So... Move the paper up. In sodium chloride, uh, so sorry, sodium carbonate, we have two sodiums, we have one carbon, and we have three lots of oxygen. So there's three oxygen atoms. If we take our periodic table, we can see that the relative atomic mass for sodium is 23. So each sodium atom has a kind of mass of 23. So we want two lots of 23. And that's 46. We want one lot of carbon. Carbon has a mass of 12. So 1 times 12 equals 12. And then we went three lots of 16. Because that's the relative atomic mass for oxygen three lots of 16 don't forget in science you are always allowed to use your calculator to do calculations it's why i made you run and get yours earlier so it just makes life a lot easier for us so three times 16 is 48 according to the definition we need the sum of all of these so we need to add them up so we do 46 plus 12 plus 48 and that gets us 106 so the relative formula mass which we write as mr of sodium carbonate is equal to 106 and i find it really useful to lay out my work like this with the equation how many types of atom there are and how many of each there is then you can start looking at the atomic mass then we just add them all up at the end okay so could you pause the video and have a go at calculating the relative formula mass that are on the right just a quick reminder that if we have aluminium chloride and if we take calcium Nitrate. I will remind you what the numbers and the brackets mean. Let me just switch back to the notebook. Okay, so here there is one aluminium atom and there are three chloride ions. Here there is one calcium and there is two, because there's a little one in here. So what we do with brackets is we have to times whatever's inside by the outside number. So there's 1 times 2, so there's 2 lots of nitrogen. And then here we've got 3 times 2, which is 6, so there's 6 oxygens. So hopefully that should help you complete those questions on this slide. Pause the video and have a go for yourself. Okay. And the last thing we're going to do today is percentage composition. So this is the percentage of a particular element that makes up a compound. 
So, I've made a mistake on this slide. If you put times 100 here, I will correct that on the PowerPoint before I send it out to you all. Okay, so for the worked example, we're going to be calculating the percentage composition of calcium carbonate. Sorry, of sodium carbonate. I've made a couple of errors on this slide. I apologise. So, if we take calcium carbonate, we need to find the atomic mass of the element, which we can find on the periodic table. We can then calculate the relative formula mass which is what you were doing on the last slide for the entire compound and we can then substitute this into the equation that I will update in your PowerPoint don't forget to put the times 100 if you're just using the video so we have to look at the AR divided by the MR times 100 this is a quick note so that I can remember the equation easier so we're looking at calcium so what is the atomic mass of calcium? So the atomic mass of calcium is 40. So we can write AR of calcium equals 40. So then we want the MR of calcium carbonate. So we've got one calcium, we have one carbon, and we have three lots of oxygen. So that's 1 times 40. 1 times 12, 3 times 16. Once again, just use your calculator. There's no need to try and do these in your head. So we have 40 plus 12 plus 48 is equal to 100. So fill that in here. And then we substitute into this equation. So we have the atomic mass of calcium divided by the formula mass of calcium carbonate times 100 which is 40 divided by 100 times by 100 so the percentage composition of calcium in calcium carbonate equals 40 percent so have a go and try and complete these examples on the slide once again don't forget to times that equation by 100 okay finally have we met our objective so Describe how the law of conservation of mass links to the relative formula masses using balanced equations. Okay, so we've, put, we've got all the tools we need now to answer this question. So, the law of conservation of mass states that the mass of all of the reactants in an equation must equal the mass of all the products in a balancing, balanced chemical equation. And that's because we can't make or destroy things. So, if we were looking and we balanced an equation, we could add up all of the relative formula masses on one side and all the relative formula masses on another side, and they would be equal. And that's what we were learning today. So, thank you very much, and I will see you in school again soon.